Do you see what I see? Does this frisbee look the same to you as it does to me? The same shape, the same color, the same size? Is it moving at the same speed? Intuitively, the answer is yes. Intuitively, we think that we all see the world in the same way as each other, and that we all see the world as it really is. I see this frisbee as having a certain size because it is that size. Vision scientists agree with this intuition. Vision scientists also think that we all see the world in the same way. And we can see these assumptions that are made in the ways that vision scientists conduct their experiments. Typically, only four observers are used, and the data from these four observers、uh, lead the scientists to make claims about how vision works in everyone. Take a typical、uh, setup for one of these studies. A person's head is often fixed in some kind of chin rest or head mount. This prevents any kind of head movements and allows the scientists to have excellent control over the exact stimulation received by the eye. The stimulation is usually a two-dimensional image presented on a computer, in which the observer has no ability to interact with the object at all. In fact, the only action the observer makes is to push keys on a keyboard. And a setup like this reveals this assumption that all that really matters for vision is what the eye sees, is the optical information received by the eye. But it turns out that if you take observers out of this constrained setting and instead you put them in a real world where they can actually interact with that world and perform natural actions, that vision doesn't work the way that scientists thought. That we don't all see the world in the same way, and that we don't all see the world in terms of just what the eye sees. But if we don't see the world in the same way, what determines what we do see? What determines what you see compared to what I see? I gained insight into this question based on my experience as an athlete. This is a screenshot of a broadcast in Germany of the gold medal match in ultimate frisbee at the World Game Championships, and this was taken moments after we had caught the game-winning goal. And I found, as an athlete, That my vision was influenced by my performance. When I was throwing well, my teammates looked closer, and when I wasn't throwing well or it was windy, my teammates looked really far away. My experience is shared by other athletes. Take this quote by Mickey Mantle: After hitting a monstrous home run, he said he couldn't really explain it, that the ball just looked as big as a grapefruit. And Martina Navratilova used to say that when she was in the zone. It was like the ball was moving in slow motion. Do you think the goal looks smaller to opponents when Hope Solo is keeper, <laughs> or that the basket looks really big to Steph Curry right now? <laughs> and so we have this discrepancy between the experience of athletes, in which case performance influences vision, and that we see the world differently from each other, and what vision scientists were telling us. That the world is just about what the eye sees, and that we all see the world in the same way. And so I decided to investigate. And to do this, I ditched the traditional laboratory setting, and I went out to the ballpark. And here, I lured players over to my booth with promises of Gatorade. <laughs> and I asked, I measured their perception of ball size. To do this, I showed them a poster with different sized circles, and I said, which of these circles matches the size of the ball? Then I collected information about their performance that day, and what I found was that the batters who were hitting better selected a larger circle. The batters that were hitting better perceived the ball to be bigger. They didn't all see the ball in the same way. Rather, they perceived the ball relative to their batting performance. <laughs> We did a similar study with golf. And what we found is golfers who were playing better saw the hole as bigger. In this study, we also asked the golfers to rate their own performance.、Um, it turns out how you think you played doesn't really matter.、Um, so if you thought you were really good, perception doesn't really care.、Um, it's just about whether or not you actually played well.、Um, now, my research has generated a lot of controversy. There's been a lot of debate about it because vision wasn't supposed to be about action. Vision was supposed to be about what the eye saw, and everyone's seeing the same hole. The eye is seeing the same hole. So how could it look bigger to some people and smaller to others? And skeptics sought alternative explanations for my data. For example, 
maybe the batters who saw the ball as bigger therefore hit better. And my data couldn't speak to this issue, so we ran another study. And we recruited 23 athletes who didn't have prior experience kicking field goals, and we measured their perception of goal size. We then gave them 10 attempts to kick a field goal from the 10-yard line and measured their performance. And then we measured perceived goal size again. And we found that performance related to post-kicking perception, but not to pre-kicking perception. It was not the case that those who saw the goal as bigger kicked better, but it was the case that those who kicked better then saw the goal as bigger. And in the study, we also found that it wasn't about performance in general, but specifically about how well they did it in a particular way. So those who did not do so well because they couldn't kick the ball high enough, they perceived that crossbar to be taller. And those who couldn't kick successfully because they kept kicking the ball too wide, they perceived the uprights to be more narrow. And so that vision care is not just about performance, but also specifically how you succeed or how you fail. We've done studies like this in a range of sports, such as in tennis players and swimmers, and also in a sport known as parkour. <laughs> so parkour, urban climbing, um, these people are amazing, right? They're jumping from building to building, they're scaling up walls, and when you watch, you think, not only how can they possibly do that, but why would they even think that was possible? <laughs> well, they don't see the world the same way. Right? When I see a wall, I see a wall, I see a barrier, they see an opportunity. Walls literally look shorter to people trained in parkour versus people such as myself who are novices. Now, these effects are not specific to athletes. They happen in all of us. So hills appear steeper and distances appear farther when you're fatigued, out of shape, carrying a heavy backpack. Objects look closer and smaller when they're easier to reach and grasp. Have you had that experience where the TV remote is just beyond reach and it looks so far away? And what these studies show is that we don't see the world as it really exists. We don't see the world in terms of an objective reality. We see the world in terms of our ability to act. It makes you wonder, well, I rely so much on vision, but, but can my vision be trusted? If my vision's not telling me exactly what's out there, should I rely on, on what I see? And the answer, for the most part, is yes. That even though vision is biased, these biases are useful. By seeing the distance to the edge of a cliff as closer, or the depth of that cliff as farther, it helps keep us a safe distance back from that edge. It's okay not to see it accurately, because we're seeing it in a way that helps keep us safe. Or by seeing that hill as steeper, that it helps keep us from overly exerting ourselves to exhaustion. And so for the most part, these biases are actually useful. They help keep us safe, they help keep us from reaching exhaustion. But sometimes these biases aren't a good thing, and sometimes we're going to have to fight what we see in order to incur the change we desire. For example, people with obesity also see distances as farther and hills as steeper. And what that means is, for someone with obesity who wants to lead an active lifestyle, their vision is telling them, no, don't climb that hill. No, don't take those stairs. Find another way, it's too steep. A hill that looks only moderately difficult to someone without obesity is going to look impossibly steep to someone with. And so a person with obesity is really going to have to fight these biases in their vision to overcome them and to, see the war, uh, and to make the active lifestyle choices that they want to make. Another example of where these biases in vision can be a bad thing has to do with, with holding a gun. So I was interested in this idea that when you hold a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And I thought, well, if that's true, what happens when you hold a gun? Does everything look like a shootable target? So to investigate, I showed my participants images like these. And their task was simple. If they saw a gun, they were to raise their arm and point to the screen. And if they saw a shoe, they were to lower their arm and point to the ground. And studies like this have been done before, but what was different in our study was we actually gave our participants a gun, or we gave them a squishy ball. And we wanted to know, how does holding a gun change vision? How does holding a gun change what people see? 
And we looked at not just performance, but also the kinds of errors that people made when they were holding a gun compared to when they were holding a squishy rubber ball. And we found something alarming. When holding a gun, people were more biased to see guns, even when a gun wasn't present. By changing their ability to act by holding a gun, by having that potential to shoot, that biased vision, and it biased them to see threats that weren't really present. And, and we all we trust our vision, right? And so if a vision tells you there's a threat there, you're going to act accordingly. And most gun owners care about gun safety. They might take classes on how to use their gun and how to store their gun. They might buy expensive safes for their guns. And in addition to caring about the physical risks of having a gun, we also need to care about the psychological risks and the fact that holding a gun, wielding a gun, is going to bias your vision. It's going to bias you to see threats, even when threats aren't present. So vision is biased by action. For the most part, this is OK. And in fact, for the most part, this is a good thing. It can keep us safe. It can keep us from reaching exhaustion. But in some instances, these biases can work against us. They can work against us in making active lifestyle choices. They can work against us in trying to promote the safety of ourselves and those around us. And so just know that vision is not a window into an objective reality. Vision is just as much about you as it is about the world. Thank you.